how y'all doing today? It is March 18th, 2024. And today I am going to remake a video. Um, I did this video in the past and <laughs> I have gotten a lot of uh, feedback on this video. Um, <clears throat> this was back when I used, when, when I was still talking about doing the uh, movie suggestions every single day. And I have had so many people that have come to this channel and they're new and they've gone back and watched this video and uh, I get it. I've gotten so many complaints because I didn't start talking about the topic until like almost 11 minutes into the video because I was doing movie suggestions and just talking about other things opposed to the topic. <clears throat> so I figured today would be a good uh, chance just to go ahead and redo this video, especially with all the new subscribers that are here to this channel. Uh, I just wanted to make this video and clean it up a little bit. Although it is really windy out here today, I hope that doesn't affect the audio too much. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. So today I want to talk about um, how much I was drinking before I got sick. Um, and like I said, I've done this video in the past and, I, and I've touched on it in other videos. But like I said, with so many new subscribers to the channel right now, um, I get this question every single day uh, in the comments. People asking me how much did I drink before I got sick. And uh, I figured today, be, like I said, it'd be a good opportunity to go ahead and just talk about it. So, like I've said in the past, <clears throat> you know, I started off uh, drinking beer. And that was, you know, I started drinking beer at a very early age. Um, I just talked about that in one of the videos just the other day when I was talking about how. Uh, my best friend's dad was a alcoholic and we picked up all the empty beer cans and then uh, took them to the recycling place and I got a stereo. And I drank beer with my best friend's dad here and there when I was younger. And, um, you know, as I started getting a little bit older, and like I've talked about previously before too, I wasn't a huge drinker uh, back then. I, I really, when I was younger, I, I, I was into the green stuff and uh, that was my, uh, I guess, drug of choice, I guess you would say. But, um, you know, alcohol just wasn't really on my radar that much back then. I mean, I, I, I remember the first time I got drunk and I really enjoyed it. Um, but it just wasn't, you know, first of all, it just wasn't that accessible to me and I could get my hands on other stuff easier. Um, although there was a bootlegger, uh, and, um, this guy sold alcohol, uh, he would sell it because where we live, um, here in South Carolina, well, all of South Carolina back in the day, there were no alcohol sales on Sundays at all. Uh, it's what they call the blue laws. And, um, you couldn't buy alcohol at all on Sunday. Not at all. Not in a restaurant, not at the store, not at a liquor store, nothing. Zero zilch. And then, um, I guess about 15 years ago or something like that, they changed the laws and started allowing people to uh, purchase um, alcohol. In, you could buy it in restaurants on Sundays, but you couldn't buy it at the store. Um, and then they finally changed the law to where you could buy uh, beer and wine and stuff like that, but no spirits on Sundays. And you had to buy them, uh, they had to be in the city limits. Um, they had to purchase a separate liquor license as well in order to sell on Sunday. Um, and from what I understand now, uh, South Carolina has just passed a bill where they're going to start allowing liquor sales on Sunday as well. So why in the world they're doing that, I have no idea, but you know, that's not you know, for me to figure out. Um, you know, that's just what, what they're doing now. Uh, but anyway... I'm getting off topic here. Like I said, uh, you know, I drank back then, but just not a, not a whole lot. Um, and you know, like I said, I was in the restaurant industry for a long time, and um, you know, I've been in the restaurant industry my whole entire life. From my first job, well, one of my first jobs is actually doing construction work when I was really young. But uh, from you know, four, 15 years old, uh, I've been in the restaurant industry, and. You know, in the restaurant industry, you get off work late at night a lot of times, and a lot of us would go out after work and have a beer or two after we would get off. Um, or we would have one at the restaurant. We would have these things that we would call shift beers, and, um, you know, we would have a couple pitchers, and we'd set them back in the kitchen for the line cooks and a couple of pitchers for the servers out front. And we would all have a couple of drinks at the end of the night. No big deal. Um, and, you know, that went on throughout my 20s. Uh, you know, I drank beer, but it just wasn't, it wasn't something that I did all the time. 
Um, I actually had a really, really low tolerance back then. People actually used to make fun of me back in the day because, you know, two, three, four beers, and I was, I was pretty drunk. And um, uh, I, just, I just didn't have much of a tolerance at all, which I guess was a good thing for me back then because I was a really cheap drunk. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I'd stop at the store, grab two tall boys or something after work, and that's all I really needed. Um, but as time went on and I got into my later 20s, uh, you know, I started working a lot more. Um, I was a... Uh, I was a kitchen manager for a very long time, um, you know, basically throughout all my uh, my young 20s. And then uh, I think when I turned about 26, 25, 26, somewhere around there, um, I actually became the general manager of a restaurant. And I was a very, very young general manager. Um, you know, looking back on it now, uh, I think I was way too young to, to have been doing that job. I just wasn't. Uh, mentally prepared for something like that. I didn't have the maturity level um, that I needed for that type of job. Um, now, I could handle all the functions and everything fine. I just wasn't mature enough, um, I don't think, to handle that position. And I was very, very, very stressed out. Uh, it was a very stressful job. And, um, you know, over that period of time, uh, you know, I was always at work. Uh, I worked so much I was working six days a week most days I didn't work anything less than a 12-hour shift every single day and most days were longer than that um, and it became it started to become a problem not only for myself but in my relationship with my wife uh, my relationship with my daughter um, you know, I had a I didn't have my any of my boys yet at that point in time I just had my daughter who's about to turn 20 years old next month um, but, uh, you know, I was just at work all the time, and it was causing a lot of issues, uh, especially in my marriage. Um, you know, when you're at work all the time like that, and you're never home, and, you know, and then you're, you know, you go out to the bar after work or whatever, and it's just a hard life to live, uh, you know, for one, because, um, you know, you're on a different schedule than everybody else, and, you know, your days off in the restaurant industry are usually different than everybody else's, you know, or most people are off on Saturday and Sunday, you know, you might have like a Monday and a Wednesday off or something like that, and like I said, I only took one day off a week, and I worked every single holiday, um, which caused a lot of issues in my marriage as well, because my wife is always telling me, you know, I want you to have Christmas Eve off, and I would always give off all my managers for Christmas Eve, and I would work by myself. Um, you know, I just really wanted to take care of my managers, take care of my staff, and I would, you know, run a skeleton crew in order to give everybody off on, on all the holidays, uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, um, Easter, uh, any of those holidays, I was the one that worked. And I worked those holidays, uh, Thanksgiving, all that stuff, every single year, my whole entire life. And I was never around for family functions. Um, and especially on Christmas Eve, you know, I would get off work at like one o'clock in the morning and you know, my wife's trying to wrap presents and I was tired and I would come home and of course, what, what was I doing? I would sit on the couch and drink beer when my wife's still trying to get presents wrapped up. Um, and you know, that, like I said, I just wasn't mentally ready for that kind of a challenge at that point in time in my life. And uh, I turned to alcohol as a crutch and as a way to handle the stress and a way to uh, drink myself out of the problems that I was having. Um, you know, and I was young. Uh, my wife and I got married when I was uh, 21 years old or 22, 21 or 22. I can't remember exactly how old I was, but, um, you know, I was just really young. My wife was really young, and we had a kid pretty young, and then on top of it, I have this really stressful job, and I'm trying to juggle all this stuff, and, uh, you know, like I said, I turned to alcohol as a way, a means to uh, alleviate my stress. And um, I, I know that I had a lot of uh, mental problems, a lot of mental issues that I still had yet to ever, you know, tackle or ever try to confront. Um, you know, things from my teenage years that uh, there were just some issues that had happened. And I never, I never tried to confront those problems and try to deal with them. Instead, I pushed them to the back of my head and started using alcohol. And uh, like I said, I started, you know, I was drinking beer at the time. And, um, 
You know, it would go from just a couple beers at night, and then it turned into a six pack. And eventually, uh, I remember when my alcohol became, a, when it actually became a real problem. It was right when I turned 30 years old. Um, I had gone to a function for my job, and uh, we had actually, we had gone to a golf course and all of the general managers had gotten together and we went to this golf course for the day. And we had a meeting that morning and then the, the later half of the day we spent it on the golf course playing golf. And um, <clears throat> I don't remember what, what the game was that we were playing. It wasn't traditional golf that we were playing. It was some kind of game that we were trying to do, play and whoever got the most points doing whatever. Uh, want a case of tequila for their restaurant and I was the one who won and and I didn't play golf like that but I, I don't remember uh, I, like I said I don't remember how the game played out it was not traditional golf but I won and I won a case of tequila and this case of tequila was actually supposed to go back to my restaurant and I never took it back to the restaurant um, I had a Jeep at the time and I put the a case of tequila in the back of the Jeep and I went home that night and I remember specifically what happened I had come home I had gotten home really late and I had been drinking out there on that golf course all day long and when I got home my wife was upset with me because of course I've been drinking again so I walked out into my garage and I was standing out there and of course I had had liquor before but it just was something I never really fooled around with I didn't really like it that much but I remember going out into my garage and like I said, my wife and I were arguing and I said, you know what, I'm going to drink some of this tequila. So I opened up the case, grabbed one of the bottles out and started drinking the tequila straight from the bottle. I was taking shots right out of the bottle. And <clears throat> that's when it started for me. That's when the problem began. And when I started drinking that tequila and taking those shots, I went from, you know, a beer buzz to just being plastered drunk in like a matter of no time and I really like that uh, because you know before I you know drinking beer it takes time you've got to have an empty stomach uh, you know it's not something you're like like that you're drunk and when I when I was drinking that liquor that night I mean I got really really drunk really quick and I was like wow this this doesn't take any time. I don't have to sit around and drink a case of beer first or whatever. I wasn't drinking a case of beer at that time, but you know, I'd probably, you know, I was probably at eight beers, ten beers a night or something like that. Um, <clears throat> maybe a twelve pack. I don't really remember exactly, but I was drinking, you know, a good bit of beer during that period of time. But once I got introduced to the liquor and started playing around with that, that's when all my problems uh, began. And <clears throat> I started drinking tequila and I basically stuck to, to tequila for quite some time. I would drink that. Uh, I probably drank that for probably about two or three years and that's all I would drink. And uh, how I basically got introduced to tequila is one of my old bosses was a tequila drinker as well and he drank tequila straight. And you know, I was kind of emulating him. He was an older gentleman and I thought, well, he drinks tequila so, you know, I can drink tequila too, why not? He's, he was much older than me and was doing fine. So I thought, you know, this stuff must be okay to drink and it must not affect your health too bad. So I started drinking tequila. And like I said, that went on for like two or three years. I continued to drink tequila. And tequila can be rather pricey, especially if you're drinking the good stuff and not drinking cheap, you know, bottom of the shelf uh, tequila. I was, and I was drinking the good stuff. Um, and I still drank beer during that period of time too. And I would just drink shots of tequila. And um, I remember one of my birthdays, right? It was like my 31st or 32nd birthday or something like that. My brother had actually come over to my house for my birthday, bought me a really big bottle of uh, some top shelf tequila. And him and I drank it that night. And I got really, really wasted that night. Ended up, we had to go out to dinner that night for my birthday and I ended up showing my you know what and embarrassing myself at the restaurant it was it was it was pretty bad and sorry about that guys the wind blew the camera over again but anyway like I was saying um, I showed my you know what that night embarrassed myself really bad and uh, you know my wife had told me I don't want you drinking any more liquor and 
that's basically where it started for me, where I started hiding my liquor consumption. My wife didn't like the fact that I drank beer, but it wasn't that big of a deal if I drank beer. She didn't like it, but, you know, as long as I stuck to the beer, um, I just didn't get that drunk. Um, anytime I drank liquor, I would get rather crazy and would act a fool when I drank uh, liquor. And, um, you know, like I said, my wife didn't like it, so I started hiding it from her. And that's when I really, really started going downhill with my alcohol consumption. Um, like I said, I was drinking, you know, top shelf tequila. It gets very expensive. So I moved over to vodka and started drinking that instead. And with the vodka, you know, you can basically mix anything with that stuff. Uh, so I found that to be rather enticing because, you know, you don't have to go through any process really. I mean, you can throw whatever in a, a cup of vodka and, you know, just drink it down. And, it, you know, it wasn't like it was, you know, had a lot of taste to it or anything like that. Uh, you know, it, it basically mixed with anything. So I started drinking vodka and started drinking it pretty regularly. And, you know, I wasn't drinking at the point where I was towards the end of my uh, drinking career at the beginning. But it gradually got worse and worse and worse and worse. And over the years, so from basically from the time I was 32 up until up until I got sick, and I was I think 42 years old when I got sick. Uh, for that 10 years straight, uh, I drank vodka and drank lots of it. Um, there were so many nights uh, that I, you know, that I blacked out. And I just got so intoxicated. From um, and like I said, there towards and it, that just went on for years and years and years, and I continued to drink the vodka. And what ended up happening was um, back in 2020, uh, actually 2021. In 2020, I had bought our house that we live in now, and it was right at the beginning of COVID. We had, still owned our other house. We were trying to sell that one, and I was really, really stressed out. We had. It was right at the beginning of COVID. We were all scared. Um, you know, I had two mortgages I was trying to support, plus, you know, uh, utilities on both homes. And we had gotten a contract on our on our house, the old house, and we thought we had, had it, we had it sold. And then the buyers, because of COVID, they backed out and they uh, they said we're not going to do it. And uh, there, here we are again, stuck, and we didn't have a buyer for our home. So, once again, I really started drinking even heavier during that period of time, um, you know, because I was so stressed and thinking this is going to be the fix for it all, which it wasn't. Um, and what ended up happening was, in 2021, uh, I worked at, I was a chef at a fine dining establishment, and I thought, I had this bright idea that if I quit my job, that's going to solve all my problems. And guess what? I was completely wrong. Um, you know, I learned the one lesson that running away from your problems does not fix them. And I really thought that that was going to fix my problems. So I gave a three-month notice and told my boss, I'll work here. I will train my replacement. I will help you guys out in any way I need to. It was right at the end of the year. I finished up so it went from October, November, yeah, I put my notice in, in the end of September, I worked October, November, all the way through to December. I got the place through all the, like, the busiest part of the year, and during the Christmas holidays, we would have, like, multiple parties every single day. I mean, we, December was the craziest month of the year for us. Um, I got them through that, stressed myself out majorly, and then left my job. Well, right after that, I started my own business and started doing that. And I'm thinking, this is going to solve all my problems. I'm going to quit drinking. I don't have to worry about anybody telling me what to do anymore. You know, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's not what happened. What ended up happening is my drinking just skyrocketed and went completely out of control. I was running my own business. And I had one employee that was working for me and... You know, this guy actually worked for me at, at the restaurant that I worked at. He was one of my employees there, and I took him with me because um, I liked him so much. And 
you know, he was a younger kid, and, you know, he was just, you know, he didn't care what I did, and I started drinking all day long, and I, you know, I drank in the morning before work, and I would drink when I had an opportunity when I was a chef, but nothing like I got to when I left my job um, and started working on my own. Um, there was a cooler of beer in my car at all times, 24-7. Um, I always had a bottle of liquor with me, um, and I always carried around my little shot bottles of uh, the little cinnamon liquor that I would have on me all the time. And I would wake up in the morning and have two, three liquor drinks and drink beer all day long, all day. And there were so many days that I kicked off work early because I just wanted to drink. I didn't finish the job that I should have gotten done that day. Um, I would have to come back the next day to do it because I would just tell the people that I, you know where I was at, you know, I'm sorry, I gotta come back tomorrow. I just can't finish this up today or whatever. And you know, it just got really out of control. My drinking just skyrocketed, and like I said, I drank all day from the time I woke up in the morning until I fell passed out in the afternoon. And when I say I passed out in the afternoon, I mean I passed out in the afternoon, not in the evening. I passed out in the afternoon. I was passed out by 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon uh, every single day, if not earlier. Uh, there were so many days that my wife would come home from work and would find me just passed out, uh, you know, and I had been asleep for quite some time, and I wouldn't wake up till the next day and would have no recollection of what had happened the night before or anything. And there were most nights I was just, just gone, just asleep for the rest of the night. So many wasted hours, so many wasted days, so much time I could have spent with my family or been doing something productive. Instead, I got up in the morning and got drunk, drank all day long until I passed out, and that was it. And like I said, that's when things just, just went straight down the tubes for me. And my alcoholism completely spiraled out of control. And I was drinking um, a handle of vodka every single two days um, without fail. And not, not including, I was drinking beer on top of it, and I was drinking shots of the cinnamon liquor with it as well. And right towards the end, um, you know, right before I got sick, I mean, I was really putting it back. Um, I remember one day, I almost finished uh, a handle by myself in one day. I remember waking up the next morning and looking and seeing how much I had left, and I, I could not believe, I don't know what in the world that was, but I could not believe that I'd almost finished that whole handle the night before. Um, I was surprised that I didn't, like, you know, have something happen in my sleep that night because I had drank so much. And then towards the end, uh, you know, I got sick. And, um, you know, like I said, towards the end of it, I was drinking a handle of vodka every two days. And uh, right at the end of it, I remember the day I woke up. I woke up that morning, I was very sick, I was throwing up, um, but you know, that was every day. I threw up every single morning. Um, you know, for years I would throw up every single morning. Uh, I felt so bad, and I had gotten, I had gotten to the point where I didn't have to stick my finger down my throat or anything. I could just lean over the toilet and just throw up, I mean, just like that. I mean, I didn't have to do anything in order to trigger it, and, because I had gotten so good at it at this point. And that morning, like I said, I woke up, I uh, threw up, um, I felt horrible, and I thought it was just like any other day. Um, but I continued to throw up that day, and kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And the next day is when I started uh, throwing up the coffee grinds. And that's what led into all this and me getting sick. But um, that's basically it, guys. I mean, that's, that's where, where I was. Um, started off drinking beer. You know, just a couple here and there. Uh, that moved into about a six pack every day. Then that, you know, escalated to a 12 pack every day. And then that 12 pack escalated to me taking a couple shots of tequila here and there. Then that escalated to me taking, you know, multiple shots of tequila every single day, which escalated to me drinking vodka every single day. And that escalated to me getting very, very sick and almost losing my life because of it. And I'm telling you, my drinking was completely out of control. And looking back on it now, I, j I can't believe that I used to drink like that. But I was sick. I was so addicted, and I could not stop. I, I tried multiple, multiple times, and it never worked out. 
So, with that said, guys, I just wanted to remake this video today and just talk about how much I did used to drink back in the day. And, um, uh, like I said, that video, I talked, you know, for 10 or 11 minutes before I even got into how much I actually was drinking back then. Um, but, uh, I've got a really good topic for tomorrow's video, um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, I do have that interview that's coming up. I've got to call that gentleman actually here after he's done doing this. I know I'm supposed to be doing that interview either tomorrow or Wednesday, and I need to, uh, go ahead and work out all the details. So that's coming down the pike. We have that interview with the gentleman that lives here in South Carolina as well. Um, um, he actually, uh, has liver disease too. Um, he's actually um, been going to MUSC uh, just like I have to be get to get his treatments um, So I'm really looking forward to doing that interview with him getting his story uh, And like I said, I've got a really good uh, topic for tomorrow's video. So keep an eye out for that But um, that's it for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching this um, If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers right now And I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button um, that'll keep you in the loop. You'll see I upload videos every single day and talk about alcoholism, um, addiction, uh, you know, the health consequences that come along with it. I mean, basically anything that's related to alcoholism or addiction or anything like that. I mean, the, the, the floor is open. Um, so, and also, if you guys have any ideas that you'd like to hear me talk about, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have. Um, I'm always open to, you, to any of y'all's ideas. I mean, this channel is for you all. Um, I just talk. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to hop off of here. I love y'all so much. Thank you for watching today's video. And until tomorrow, I will see y'all then.